Financial Report. Significant, uh, significant breaking news. The Pentagon just announcing that the virus was circulating robustly in these communities and many people were getting infected. Here's what the summer of the Delta variant has looked like. We're going to put this up on the screen. We found thousands of children at residential schools were unaccounted for over several decades. <laughs> The protest took a turn. The virus isn't going away, but do not want to have your under the carpet. The last U.S. troops have withdrawn. Isn't revealing the exact location, only that it was somewhere near this school. Officials believe it is now the dominant strength. RCMP are on scene. Delta wave is going to surge across the. First Sunday since RCMP erected a barrier around the Grace Lake. We don't like where this is going. We are following some breaking news this morning. Just one. experiencing a surge in infection. The remains of 215 individuals were located. The wave of the pandemic is coming on strong. Clashing with officers in the street. Parks in between who are refusing to close the door. And they will investigate those motions on the ground. Waves of infection are now staying shortly after. my feet into what is that require your voice to speak Lord in this deep would you also calm the storm inside of me
one. Even through the chaos, his peace surrounds us, no matter what. And we are so, 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 so excited that you are all here with yes. us tonight for this big launch. That's amazing. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone in this room. Welcome, everyone that is a uh, special guest. We have quite a few amazing special guests with us this evening. Thank you for coming all the way down to, to visit with us and enjoy this time. So we'd like to thank a couple of our dignitaries who made it in the room tonight. So Tabor's Mayor, Andrew Prokop, as well as the MLA Grant Hunter for the Tabor Warner area, welcome. Welcome to all of you online watching, as well as dignitaries who are also in our overflow area outside. That's right, we have people outside, we've got volunteers outside, live streaming, anyone that was uh, maybe maybe a little late getting here, they're watching <laughs> from outside, it's actually pretty nice out there. It's, it's gonna be a party out there too, Beautiful. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have such a great uh, lineup of things going on tonight. We're gonna start with a time of worship with our team. How great was that first song? Hello. I'm so emotional with this song every I single know. time. I know, it's hard to <laughs> talk afterwards. It. Pastor Kelly's going to come up and he's going to share his heart and his vision for what's coming up next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> and then we have our big presentation for the big reveal. Yeah. <laughs> and this little thing called an after party that's happening afterwards, apparently. An after party. <laughs> an after yeah. party. But do, do you have your phone on you, Sarah? I do. I have my phone, okay. yes. Can you take it out? Does anybody else have their phone on them at the moment if they want to wave it at us? Phones. Waving it in the we air. We know you have them, guys. Take your phone. We see them. Put it on silent. Silent. And put it away. Put it away. We want you to experience everything in the room by being fully present and available and watching and not watching through your screen when you're here in the room. That's right. No distractions and no sneak peeks. We're waiting for the big reveal. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, bathrooms. A few more things. A few more things. There's bathrooms actually through these two exit right doors on my side here. Right there. You can go through there. Um, your kids, if you haven't checked your kids in yet, the check-in is also through there if you're a little bit late coming in the, in the doors. And they have, oh my goodness, they have <laughs> a, like a for real carnival happening out there. There is cotton candy. They will be revved up on sugar for sure. It's <laughs> awesome out there. So I suggest so if, they, if they like that, send them that away. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? We I just, think we've covered it. I think we've covered everything. We're, that was fast. Okay. Well, you're already standing, so I'm not going to ask you to do that. <laughs> but we are going to go ahead and uh, start a time of worship. Here we go. Let's praise Let's God. Let's
for life very long. I've got a feeling.
the nations like the world has never seen. Come on. We'll see revival flood the streets. Come on. Cities in revival. Come on. We're going to see his glory like never before. This is a significant night. I don't know, even just driving here tonight, I, I just felt the weight of this moment, of what tonight is. This is the launch not just of a, a, a new name. This is kind of like a, a, a replant in many, in many ways for such a time as this. And this is, this is a significant thing. This, this is a significant thing for our church, but I feel it's a significant thing for this nation. Come on. Because we serve a good God. Come on. Too good to not believe. God, we thank you so much. We invite you here, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're here in our midst for two or three gather there. You are in the midst and we invite you here, Holy Spirit, minister to each one of us tonight. Speak to us directly, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that, the, that, that you have proclaimed that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And God, tonight is a counterpunch to everything the enemy's been trying to throw at us over the last couple years in Jesus' name. Lord, this is the time for the church to rise up ne like never before. And Lord, just like we proclaimed, we are gonna see glory fill the streets like we've never seen. 
Don't you tell me he can't do it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on. Amen. You guys may be seated. Man, God is so good. Wow, look at your faces. You guys are, this is awesome. We've already done a service already. We had, we had 200 and some volunteers in here doing a pre-reveal. They're out there uh, preparing for what is going to come after this. And we're excited about this. You guys excited? I want to, we've got some awesome pastors in, in the room. I just want to, I want to point some out. Pastor Daniel and Joel uh, from the Miss City Church right here in Lethbridge. Welcome to you guys. So good to see you. Pastor Jonathan and Natasha from Experience Church in Calgary. Welcome, my friends. Good to see you guys. Pastor Walter Malera and the crew from the Spanish Church. Welcome to you guys. And we have Dan Nickel in the house from the Executive Director of Life Water Canada. Come on. Welcome, welcome. And of course, we have, we have David Craig from the Miracle Channel in the house. And we have Pastor Jakin and Becca Mullen from Home Church in Red Deer. And we have Pastor Leon Fontaine from Springs Church. Welcome, man. So good. Plus, we have many others joining us online, wherever you guys are watching from. Man, welcome. This is, this is going to be a, a great night. We're excited. Pastor Leon has, has been a, a mentor and a friend to me for, for, I don't know, it's been years. And one of the things that you taught me, Pastor Leon, I don't know, it was years ago at, at a conference, and you taught many people this, but it stuck with me. But there's, you said at a conference once that it, for leaders to walk with wisdom in uncertain times, you need to have, you need to be three things. Number one, you need to be a historian. And that historian is you need to, you need to learn as much as you can from others who have faced uncertain circumstances themselves. What they, you have to learn what they did right. You have to learn what they did wrong. You have to learn why they did what they did, but it's always wise to look back in history and study some of the greats, some of the not so greats, and learn all that you can. The second thing Pastor Leon, you taught us was that you need to be an analyst. And an analyst is you need to look around the current circumstances. What are leaders doing today around the world? I, I love, 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 love God's church. And I think, I, man, there's some phenomenal leaders in God's church around the world. And I'm, I might be kind of biased, but I've traveled all over the world, and I honestly think that the best pastors, the best leaders of God's church in the world are in Canada. I really do. Not a diss to anybody else watching. I just, I just happen to, I just happen to think because there's different oppositions that we face here, and I, st I love studying and watching Canadian pastors. And what they do in times like this and the decisions they make, and we, we can learn how they're handling certain circumstances and how many times I've been on the phone and called any one of these guys on here and just said, hey, what are you doing, help? <laughs> like, what, what, do you, what do we do, how do we do this? That's being an analyst and studying the times and what's going on. The third thing we need to be is we need to be a prophet. We need to be a historian, an analyst, and a prophet. We need Holy Spirit. Right? We need to press into what the Holy Spirit is saying in these times and follow His lead. Because only He sees the future. And there, there is such a thing as entering into you know, times that you march off the map where you, you go into seasons that's never been there before. And studying history might not help as much or analyzing the current circumstances people are lost. But sometimes we can never be lost, lost when we got the Holy Spirit and listen to His voice. Amen. John said this in Revelation, to him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So I, I want to kind of pull on those three things for, for a moment. It kind of set us up to where we're going. I, uh, I love history. And over this last year, I've kind of dug more into history than before. 
As many of you know, I, I read a, a book that kind of rocked my world back in January by Dr. Gerald Sitzer, and, and it was talking about the history of uh, all the letters and communications that happened in, in, uh, in the first three centuries of the church. Communications that happened in the church, what they, what they talked to each other about, communications that happened among the, the Romans, officials about the church, and there's so much that I learned just in reading these letters and interactions, what the church did and what it was known for, and it was phenomenal. I, I learned so much, and I was like, okay, we, we need to shift some things as a church, and I, I need to shift some things as a pastor and how I see things and do things, and out of that has come a lot of the messages that we've talked about this year, just saying we need to be kingdom-focused. This is a kingdom time. There's, there's, there's certain times that the, one of the big things that I took away from that is that the early church, they were so kingdom-minded that they walked with boldness and resilience and they weren't shaken by all the, the times that were going on because they had their eyes on a higher kingdom. Yeah, they weren't shaken by what the government was doing. Because <laughs> they were kingdom focused. And I learned some of these things. I was like, we need to learn how, to, we don't understand kingdom as much in, in today's world. And because of that, I was like, well, we got to teach more on this. we got to press more into this. And started reading all these scriptures and doing that. I learned that. But I also read some history recently on the turn of the 20th century. And the reason I got kind of fixated on that is because, man, I, you know, we go through COVID and we hear all the people saying, you know, all, all the things going on and saying, man, this is crisis, this is crisis, this is crisis, and all this, the, cha the chaos that's going on. And I'm thinking, what would it have been like to be born in on 1900? Right? But by, by, by the time you're 14 years old, the world breaks out in war. And then comes a massive plague that wipes out a whole millions and millions of people. And then you get in, into the 20s and everything, everything's back to normal again. And then the crash of the 30s and then a second world war by the time you're in your mid-30s. And you're going, man, after, I mean, and it's just, it's just all this kind of stuff. And I was like, man, what, what? and there's so much that changed in, the, in that time period in time. I mean, you just think about it, the whole world kind of shifted and changed. And one of the things that I kind of, I kind of got fixated on was, I, I, it's kind of weird, it might be weird, but I got kind of fixated on Henry Ford. It's kind of sideways going, what was that? I got fixated because, listen, Henry Ford, he, yes, he's most famous for inventing an automobile. But if you think about it, his invention, his vision sparked like world change. Before he had a vision of an automobile, a self-powered automobile, there were no roads. There was horse buggy, kind of rough, tough. there was no roads, there was no gas stations. There's no, no garages, no, like there's, there are all these things. And I was like, wow, I, it fascinated me. And, and so I, I began studying this out and going, this guy had a vision that transformed the world and, and, and just on this idea. And I was like, but what he did was there's so many things that he did that I thought was so fascinating. I was, I was like, really fascinating. And one of the things I found fascinating, I was like, okay, well, how did this all start? You know what? I, I was, it was amazing. It started with the Model T. Many of you know this. The Model T was his first thing. Did you know what date the Model T was released to the public? Look at this. October 1st, 1908. And I was like, of the 365 days in the year, what are the odds? I was like, that's kind of cool. But listen, that's when it got released. And that's when everything changed. But listen, when he released the automobile, he had a whole lot of critics that didn't understand his vision didn't, didn't, and criticizing his and gave all the reasons and all the excuses of why it couldn't work because nobody had seen this before. Right? So then they're saying, well, yeah, it's, it's not as good as a horse and buggy. And he would say, yeah, it's faster. And they're like, you, you, know, you don't have to feed it. Like the same, like... And they would be like, yeah, but you run out of gas, you're stranded. Right? And that was, a, that was a legit problem. And if it breaks down, nobody can fix it. That's a legit problem. And they give all the reasons as to why his vision wouldn't work. And to, to be honest, they were right. Did you know that, that he sold his first car for $825? But this is what's even more fascinating. That was in 1908. By 1916, he had lowered the price of the car to $360.
Do you know why? Because he had a vision that was bigger than just his pocketbook. He had a vision that every person would be able to afford a car. Now, that's radical business thinking. Radical, like I'm gonna lower it. He also had, had this vision, he's like, we gotta solve this problem. When, when they built the Model T, the gas tank was underneath the front seat of the car, very safe. Um, <laughs> And it was kind of awkward to do. You had to pull the, you know, the, the, the front seat off and, and you could only get gas at a general store and you, they, they didn't even have containers. They just had it in you know, these big things. And so you had to bring your own container to get gasoline and then you had to, bring your, you had to get a funnel somehow to get that gas into the, into the tank and to fill this up and, and you know, to have, have gas. And it was, it was awkward. It was messy. It was so inconvenient. And see, all the critics went, see? Horses are better. But he persisted. And so then what did he start doing? He started finding, and soon, in a couple of years, he, you know, 1910, 1911, 1912, all of a sudden they started entrepreneurs, and he started empowering these entrepreneurs to begin uh, to getting creative, and they got creative, and they started building, you know, uh, fueling stations and these little you know, isolated tanks, and they'd, and they'd actually build the, the, the nozzle that we have in our gas pumps today. They built it to fit the Model T, right? So they built it specific for that, and then they started selling gas on the sidewalks, and then the oil companies went, wait, we see a business opportunity, and by 1912, they started having, they started having these self-contained gas stations that we see today, that is familiar today, and they did it, and then everything changed, and when, all, when that changed, he went from selling 312,000 cars a year to 6.2 million. Now watch. What does that have to do with us? What that has to do with us is that vision isn't enough. Vision isn't enough. You have to build a structure suitable to house it. Right? Come on, church. You get, this, this is important. It's not just good enough that we change a name and that we cast a nice flowery vision. There has to be structure that goes with it. And Jesus said this, he said this, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the wine will burst the skins and both wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. What's Jesus saying? You can't pour new vision into old structures. So this is not, listen, this is not just a new vision. Rah, rah, we're going to do something different. This is new. This is, this is new. This is flowery. This is great. Looks great. Sounds great. We have to restructure. And I'm, I'm saying this today. We have been evaluating. We've been working on this for a year. We've been evaluating the church and all the rest of it. And we're changing some of the structures and the way that we do church. It has to change. We can't go back to what was or to what's always been. And we can't just talk change. We got to do change. And there has to be new structures. So over this weekend and over the months ahead, we're going to be introducing new structures to house this vision. We're going to start training teams tomorrow on, on, on some of what that structure looks like and how we're going to rethink church. We've got a nation to take. So I started reading about Henry Ford and I, I immediately started, I thought of Elon Musk. Well, he's kind of the modern Henry Ford. He changed the game again, right? I mean, he introduced the full electric vehicle. And guess what? He too faced critics. And guess what their complaints were? The very same ones that they threw at Henry Ford. Right? They said, well, you can't, you don't have any charging stations. How do you charge this thing? You can't get very far. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's not going to, you know, I can't rely on that. And, and listen, so what did he have to do? What did Tesla have to do? They had to build charging stations. But here's, this is one massive difference between what Elon Musk did and what Henry Ford did. And this is, I just watch this and I went, there's something different here. Elon Musk built charging stations that were for Tesla only. Which is 
different than what Henry Ford did. Henry Ford, yeah, he had a monopoly for a while, but he opened up, he had a different type of thinking and he was, he was about getting cars to the customers and about all the customers having what was convenient for them, not about getting all the business for himself and all that, he, wealthiest, one of the wealthiest men ever, but he had a different way of doing things. Now here's the difference. Today, in the US, there are 1,359 Tesla charging stations compared to 115,000 gas stations. What's the lesson we learn? Standardization. What do I mean by that? As a church, listen, we can't be insider focused. That's not gonna work anymore. We can't just be about us. We can't just be about us in the city. We can't just be about us in the country. We can't be the only church, the best church, the, my church is better than your church. We can't be about just us. You can only get the Holy Spirit and get charged up in our church. No, no, no. We have to be about the big C church. If we're going to take this nation back, it's going to be all the church. So things have to change a little. So we need to analyze. We need to, we need to understand history and we need to analyze the current circumstances. This is what I've learned by analyzing the current couple, couple years. Haven't they been a couple years? <laughs> Anybody tired of it yet? Yeah. Understatement. But this is what we can learn about the current times. And if we look at the current times, it's got to leave, and I've talked to a lot of pastors, it's leaving pastors concerned, confused, and sobered. Because the way that we always did church doesn't work anymore. And pastors are saying, my people aren't coming back, and people aren't coming back, and the church is not doing this, and we're not doing that. Yeah, because we can't do church like we've always done it. Something has to change. And there's some big things, big, big, big things that I've noticed. And I've noticed this is, this is what the enemy's been trying to throw at us for the last couple of years. Come on. Number one, I've noticed this in analyzing current circumstances. I've noticed there's an increasing divisiveness in society. That people seem to be looking for reasons to hate and to separate. All right, that there's, there's everywhere you go where there's one side and the other side. There's this side and that side and this divisiveness. And listen, we have to counterpunch to that because that is opposite of Jesus. That is opposite of the gospel. And the church has to be different. Second thing I've noticed that's really bugged me, and I, there's no coincidence that we're this weekend we're rebranding, relaunching. I told you this. I told you the last couple of weeks that this lockdown. We considered what are we going to do with all the rules and all the rest of it, and what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And I was like, no, no, we have to go ahead for such a time as this because it couldn't be better. And listen, the the, the thing, the reason why this weekend is so key is because the second thing that's really bothered me, really, really bothered me, is the residential schools. And it's not new information. But what sickens me about this is that so-called Christians would dare to use the name of my God to control and abuse and, and, and kill others. There's disgusting, and then there's a whole nother level of disgusting. And my level of disgust is like through the roof because you can't use the name of Jesus. You can't use the name of God to control somebody else. That is, that is, that is pure from the pit of hell. That is not the gospel. That is not Jesus. And because of that, the church has been marred and marked, and society out there is saying, they've lumped all of us into the same thing and saying the church is disgusting. The church is the problem with the world. The church is this. The church hates. The church is dividing. The church this and all the rest of it. And they're, they're right. The way that we've currently done church, we've abused what was been handed to us. And we have to communicate change. And we have to lead that change. A day off is not enough. There has to be change. 
And so part of the reason why we're renaming and rebranding is because, because we have to model that change and say we acknowledge our past is marred and history and saying we have to be changed. We're not going to be perfect. We're not admitting to be perfect or that from here on out we're not going to make mistakes. We're not saying that, but we're saying we have to change. The third thing, and I touched on this already that I've noticed, is that the attending church has become largely irrelevant. <laughs> Pastors saying people aren't coming back to church. Well, guess what? The reason why they're not coming back to church is because, this is what I learned through COVID, is that, is that in COVID, we put too, I put too much emphasis, as pastors, I put too much emphasis on what happens from the stage on Sunday morning and too little infant emphasis on the other 167 hours in the week. Church is not one day a week. Church is not a place where we attend. Church is who we are. So with all of this, what do we do? While the world divides, we choose to come alongside, aligning even if we don't agree. And while religion uses God to control people and, and to further its own agendas, we choose to live like Jesus, to love like Jesus, to serve like Jesus, and to be servants first, and to love all. And we choose, we choose to get involved in people's lives no matter how messy. Loving without contingencies. And while an attending a weekend service is, is, is great, we're gonna, it's not, it's, it's not all that there is. We're going to choose to activate 24 seven church. And this is one of the structural changes we're making. We're gonna lead with My City Care. What do I mean by that? We're gonna plant my city cares across this country in any, any city that would possibly do it, and this is what we wanna do. We wanna activate the church to serve its community. We just did an event last weekend in Medicine Hat, and over 500 people came out in that, and guess what? It wasn't us that did it. We went and helped, and we came alongside and partnered with two other churches in that city that ran my city care, and we just went in there and equipped them, and they kept on saying over and over and, going, over and again, thank you, thank you, thank you for making this so easy to serve the needy and the, feed the hungry and all the rest of it. Thank you for doing that, and that's what we wanna do. We wanna activate the church to be the church. That's what I want to do. I want to create a movement, not our own organization. I want to create a movement. And our standardization, our standardization is going to be to do whatever we possibly can to come alongside any church, anywhere, at any time, and activate and help and support and whatever we can do. And if I was to look into the future and feel what the Holy Spirit is saying to me, and this is the prophet side, this year has also left me curious, but teachable. Can't get stuck in what we've always done. And I sense this, I sense it from the Holy Spirit. It's like much, much, much has changed. And there is no going back to what was. I don't wanna go back to what was. We gotta be open to change. We need to dare to think differently. And here's, what, here's a quote from Dr. Gerald Sitzer in his book, Resilient Faith. And this one just slapped me upside the head. He said this, I love this. He says, the best hours of, of the Western Christianity might be ahead of us, not behind us. Assuming we dare to think differently about what it means to be a Christian and to live as Christians in a culture that is changing. Church, we're going to dare to think differently. Putting it all together, we must change. We must dare to think differently. We have to revise. We have to revision. We have to restructure. And prophetically, I believe that we were made for such a time as this. I say that. I'm saying, like, I'm not, come on. For such a time as this. That before God formed the earth, he had you in mind, he had me in mind. He placed us in the church for this time, in this season, that all the problems and all the chaos that's going around us, we can have peace because we're the solution. We're the answer, we're the hope. And we need, listen. 
Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. That means right now that, the, that we's building his church. He's using us to do it. This is our time. Come on, this is our time for such a time as this. Why don't you stand to your feet? Let's worship.
Peter's first sermon, 3,000 souls get saved. The church started as a movement. The Romans called it the third way, stating that Christians cannot be distinguished from the rest of human race by country or language or custom. They do not believe in cities of their own. They do not use peculiar forms of speech. They do not follow an eccentric manner of life. Rome could not so easily monitor and control this group. What made Christians so different? They believed in the reality of one another and a greater kingdom over which God ruled. The Roman Empire was very hostile to Christianity. Accepting the title of bishop was accepting a death sentence. Rome supposed if they killed the bishops, they could kill the movement. The church was at risk of being destroyed by outside forces. Constantine legalizes Christianity. For the time being, the widespread persecution was put on hold. The church was growing in number and political influence. Diversity of thought had birthed many heresies, and the councils were called to settle theological disputes between warring ideological factions. The church was in danger of being torn apart by internal forces. Corrupt leadership, enticed by power and wealth, hijacked the mission of the church and turned her into a mechanism of the state. In response, monks preserved and contributed to the wisdom of the church. Spanning from caves in the deserts of North Africa to settlements in the mountains of Europe, under the careful watch of dedicated men, the treasury of the church wisdom was protected from war, famine, flame, and plague. A revival was on the way. The church was slowly wrestled from the hands of the few and put back into the hearts of the masses. Under threat of execution, scripture that was legally only dictated in Latin or Greek and in the hands of the clergy was translated into common tongues. Gutenberg's printing press had made it possible for those translations to be mass produced and put into the hands of hungry laymen. The infant Protestant church was organized and a resurgence of doctrine and discipline fueled the church for the next 400 years. Christianity became a birthright more than a way of life. Jesus took a back seat to the religion and its institutes once again. The power and the potency of the church had waned. The revivalists placed a renewed emphasis on individual repentance and holiness returning the masses to a personal relationship with Jesus. Pentecostal expressions were birthed at Azusa Street under William Seymour's preaching and leadership. Denominations and movements that now have millions of members worldwide were birthed in these revivals. This is our history. The church has weathered all kinds of storms, prevailing against the gates of hell as Jesus said it would. We should be thankful grateful, in awe of what has been preserved and what has been passed on to us to steward. As the writer of Hebrews said, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and holy fear.
actually be keeping us from seeing the changes happening before our very eyes and from adapting creatively to them. The best hours of the church might be ahead of us, not behind us. Assuming we dare to think differently about what it means to be Christian and to live as Christians in a culture that is changing. There is so much fear in the world today. People are getting This is a moment that is significant in history. Parallel represents our heart to come alongside. Our local communities, our local governments, our provincial governments, our federal governments, as a church, we come alongside. We come alongside other churches, we walk parallel. We come alongside marriages and the broken and the hurting, and we, we come, come alongside those who we agree with and those who we disagree with. Choosing to love through relationship, not religion. Amen. Jesus said this. I, I preached this in, uh, in the Kingdom series back that we went through the Lord's Prayer, and we only got to the first sentence. But listen, he said, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. That's as far as we got. God's kingdom come. Then he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's parallel. We're called to walk parallel with the kingdom of heaven, to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, to be expression of what happens in heaven is an expression of here on earth. We are a kingdom first church. And being kingdom first, Jesus said this, he says his greatest commandment was to love others as I have loved you. That's his greatest commandment. And we're going to choose to love all. And we have, a, we have a slogan that we're going to introduce. We've been using no perfect people. Great. But we're going to be using one. And our new slogan is going to be for love and impact. Because Jesus said... This new command I give you to love 
one another. We're going to be studying and what that means, what love means, and how what it means to love all. All the rest of it is not just ushy gushy, feely touchy feely. It's nothing. It's it's gonna. We're gonna learn how to love as Christ loved. Because he says he didn't just tell us to love. He says love as I have loved you. Our purpose statement as a church is this. You're gonna see it everywhere. It's it's to be a movement, not an organization that exists for itself. To be a movement of imperfect people who are trading religion for relationship, committed to loving and impacting our communities. Come on. We, do, we are believing that and we're doing that because we believe every interaction is an opportunity and we are called to love. Every interaction, interaction is an opportunity to love an invitation to cultivate a lasting impact. Amen. 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 Man, we're so privileged. Man, Joy and I love you guys so much. We feel like this is a, a new season. We're so privileged as a church. Some of the structural changes that we made is, is we, uh, we said over top of myself, you guys can have a seat for a moment. We said over top of uh, ourselves, uh, three pastors that pastor us and our, we call them our presbytery and, and we've got two of the three here with us. Pastor Kevin, uh, Gerald sends his, his regards and love. He, he, he crossing the border was a little bit difficult, <laughs> but we are thrilled to have uh, the other two here. And right now I'm gonna invite Pastor Jake and Mullen to come and share a little bit with you guys. What a day, church. What a day. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I pastor a church called Home Church in Red Deer, and uh, Pastor Kelly and I actually became friends through Pastor Leon probably about 13 years ago. We became such good friends, and honestly, uh, for Beck and I, uh, Kelly and Joy Lynn are some of our best friends, and I can't leave this moment by not giving you the opportunity to honor pastors with such incredible vision, such incredible love for you and love for the city and obviously love for the nation. You need to take this opportunity, church family. I think you can even raise it up even a little bit more than that tonight. Just give Jesus a thanks. You can be seated for another moment, but I think we need to give honor where honor is due, and that's so important. I remember when Kelly called me, the day that he called me, and he said, uh, I think I have the name for a church where our staff and our, t our staff just love it and everything. We're just kind of working through it. What do you think about this? And I remember him telling me Parallel Church, and I remember thinking, like, I don't know about that. Like, what it, what is that? And then I started to see in my eyes as he started to talk about reaching out and going farther i could just see the lines of the cross going into the community to people who needed jesus so much isn't it awesome to be a part of a church with great vision in fact so much so that um what i prepared to speak to you about i was just like thinking to myself maybe i should just quit my church and just come to be here with you guys because this vision is incredible. Um, but I do want to give you a, a scripture that the Lord's put on my heart. And I, I believe it's a scripture, as Pastor Kelly said, to be prophetic. It's a scripture not just for this church. Pastor Jonathan, it's a scripture for your church. It's a scripture for Canada. It's a little weird scripture found in Daniel chapter 25, uh, sorry, Daniel 9. Verse 25, and it simply says this. I'm going to read it really slow. But it honestly, it brings out emotion in me because of where the church is across our country. Daniel 9, 25 says, it will be rebuilt even in times of trouble. It will be rebuilt even in times of trouble. And we declare that, we declare 
Jesus Church will be rebuilt in this next season from coast to coast and right here in Lethbridge and everywhere that Parallel Church will be. We just declare God's blessing on you. We declare God's blessing over your business. We declare God's blessing over your children. We declare God's blessing over the generations. We declare God's blessing over anywhere that Parallel Church will be planted or will be formed or other churches that will join Parallel Church. We declare the blessing of God upon it in Jesus' name. And the whole church said, amen. On behalf of my wife, Becca, on behalf of Home Church, I just want you to know that we are behind you 100%. We're behind Pastor Kelly, we're behind Pastor Joylin, we're behind the staff and the team here, and we are just so privileged to be a part, to pray for, to be a part of, 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 of covering you in prayer and being a part of your lives. It is a true honor, and I just wanna say thank you for having us to be a part of what God's doing right here at Parallel Church. Let's give Jesus a praise offer. Can we do that? And now I want to invite Pastor Leon to come and, and share as well. Give him a big hand as he comes. You know, in 1994, July 17th, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, I walked onto a stage for the first Sunday in Springs Church. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me very clearly and he said, you've learned to fight. You've learned to use your faith. You've learned to speak to mountains. I was pretty militant. <laughs> he said, I'm going to teach you to be a wise master builder. Oh, yeah. Something happened to me that day. I'd always adhered to this like, Wah! and I'm still like that. But he began to teach me that wisdom cries aloud in the streets. And he says, will you listen? He cries aloud to businessmen, politicians, husbands, wives, teenagers, children. He says, listen to me. God is so attracted to movement. As I see what you have done here at the church and when I saw Kelly and Joy Lynn come here, I knew he'd have to surround them with people, people with the same heart. I made decisions as a leader that, that I wouldn't chase people down. I'm not begging people to stay. When they leave, I just give them a hug and say, I can give you a list of churches if you want to go to them. I'm not chasing anybody down. I said, God, if we're going to do what you've called us to do, I, I need them with the same heart. I need them with the same culture. But I didn't know what that would look like back then. God gave me this. He said, just run. Just run. When you look to your left, there'll be people there. And when you look to your right, there'll be people there. And they'll never leave you. I've assigned them to you. I want to say that to you. Why church? Why church? Because Jesus is building it.
getting phone calls from pastors and leaders all over the world and they only have two questions only two are we in the end times is Jesus coming back and the second one is what the hell do we do Jesus didn't say go into the world and preach the gospel in every nation from country to country to the Samaritans, the marginalized. He didn't say go and it's not going to work, but hey, have a good try at it. He didn't say the gates of hell won't prevail against you because we're going to sit around and be safe. We're going to keep our heads under the radar. We're not going to do too much. We're not going to rock the boat. We the Christians, Canadian Christians. No, he said that the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. He's attracted to movement. He's attracted to people with heart. He's a heart God. I can hardly sit down just listening to your pastor and, and I'll never forget the first time that young man walked up and, and had questions. And man, he had questions. I'm going, Okay, we're going to have coffee. It turns into an afternoon together. But I recognized we can run together. I wasn't interested in grabbing every person and putting them under me. And I just wanted to collaborate. We've talked about this. I, I, I just felt like who me? I, I just want to inspire. I just want to tell them what I know. And I'm just expecting everybody I'm talking to is going to take what little bit I give them and beat me and go further and go higher and stand on our shoulders. And that every generation that you teenagers and that you kids that you're going to rise up and go that, you know, as a pastor's kid in Weldon, Saskatchewan, I was born in Porcupine Plains, Saskatchewan. We little churches, and I swore I'd never be a pastor. I said, no, God, I'm not interested in having roast pastor for lunch every Sunday. And, 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 and why is the church so wimpy and pathetic? And why are most pastors so just, God bless you and I love you. And pastor's kids were the worst. I mean, they were the, they were the kids that went, oh, is that a pastor's kid? Oh, my Lord. And we needed this change in the, in the leadership. And I'm just proud to say that in our lifetimes, we have seen this incredible change take place of men and women rising up with a passion for God. And they don't look at Jesus like some long-haired hippie in a dress with flip-flops. We look at Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in Revelations chapter 1 with his hair as white as a blizzard snow, with his eyes like a fire, and out of his mouth is a sound, and it's like, like the cataracts of a river. It's, 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 it's falls and it's rapids, and yet this John hits his face. He passes out in shock and awe at the King of Kings. And then when he speaks, it says, and that reassuring voice, picked him up and he put him back on his feet. Let me say something to you. This Jesus, this Jesus that we serve, his voice will put an enemy to flight. His, they'll come at us one way and leave before us seven ways. But his voice is reassuring to us. It is like filled with love and, and acceptance. And we're the church. We're the church. We're the ecclesia. We're the called out ones. Without us, this world has no hope. Listen to this. If we are the salt and light, and salt, there's a whole lot of cool stuff right in there. It's a preserve, it's a lot of it. But we're the light, we're the revelation. This world has no hope in dealing with DNA unless the wisdom of the church begins to rise up. This world has no hope in space travel and all the things it's learning as it learns new laws of science, as it learns how to handle nine billion people on one planet, as it looks at the complicated lifestyles of handling disease and sickness and, and differences. They have no hope if the church turns off the light. But if the church will be salt and light, well then, Leon, what do you believe about Jesus coming back? I occupy, which means do business, get up and buy channels and buildings and churches and people and raise up business people and politicians and, and movies and, and anything we can do. We are the church. This world has no hope without us. 
So for anyone who's listening to this, who's kind of given up and golly shucks, gee, we the church and, and the big bad devil, Jesus, come rescue us, whatever your end times doctrine is, and I don't care what it is, but just don't lose the victory. Don't lose the faith. He's not coming back for a defeated church. He's coming back for a church that's going to make the enemies his footstool. He's coming back for a church who loves people. This is fantastic. This is spectacular. This is something new that's taking place. This is moving and he's attracted to movement. How big will this get? Depends on two things. It's how you can manage the crowds. And it's how big your arms can circle people in love. And if you can love and you can manage, it's never going to stop. Sal and I want to just tell you, we're so happy. We're so excited. We're just, I don't even know how to put words to it. I think I speak for so many pastors and leaders here that the church is advancing. The church is advancing. I mean his church. I don't mean the church that, you know, we often hear people talk about. I got to watch my mouth here. I'm Because Sally will probably check up on me. And, but get up and run. Every time I, I hear God in my spirits, it's run, get up and run. Stop building a cathedral, stop building a, a, a monument, stop trying to build something that is going to be your posterity into the future. Stop trying to leave your mark. Stop trying to be with the great, leave it up, forget it all. Get up and run. Get up and run. And there'll be people and pastors and nations and denominations and the next generation will be. There's nothing more exciting to me than turning to the left while I'm running and seeing five of my kids and all of their spouses running with us, the whole family. You are the church. There's nothing that's going to stop you. The gates of hell won't prevail. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. It's not coming near you. You'll look on with your eyes, but it will not touch you. The light's going to grow brighter and brighter until the perfect day. It's not growing dimmer and dimmer. Our kids are going to rise up and do greater, go further. They're going to be more in love with Jesus. They're going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. The miraculous is not something to give up on. That's the only way to attract the next generation. It's the miraculous power of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Man, it's time to celebrate. I'm so glad I wasn't born a hundred years ago. This is the most exciting time in history with the most people to reach and God is showing up. We love you. Keep running.
That's like super exciting. Super. It's like all fresh and new. And I believe that it's just a reflection of what God's doing in your church. I believe that this is a season where God's going to open up some doors for you guys. I believe that the entire province and your cities and your church is just going to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I believe that God's going to do incredible things through this ministry. And a new name is just the beginning. Yes, absolutely. And I just want to say that while I don't know most of you, I know your pastors and they're the most amazing people in the whole wide world. Just appreciate them, love them. And you don't even know how far your church has reached. You've reached all the way to Southwest Florida. You guys have just changed our lives and we are so thankful for you. So just keep on doing what you're doing and just watch what God does with you guys. Yeah, we can't wait to come up and visit sometime soon. Mm -hmm. Once the borders open, once yeah. you know we get rid of the COVID in our system, all that <laughs> stuff, we can't wait to come up and be with you guys and experience all the new things that are coming. And I just pray that you guys have an incredible year. God bless. Parallel Church, what a moment. This is Jonathan and Natasha from ECN Calgary. We are so excited mm -hmm. to be celebrating with you as you launch into the future with fresh vision and direction for what God has in store. Absolutely, Pastor Kelly and Joy Lynn, we not only believe that this is significant for your church family, but also for our province and the nation of Canada. Absolutely, we are praying Psalm 27, 13, over all of you that you will see, we believe it, you will see mm -hmm. the goodness of the Lord. In, in troubling times, we need churches like you to rise mm -hmm. up with confidence, knowing that God is still doing a good thing. Thank you for your faithfulness and your bold leadership in this season. Congratulations, Pastor Kelly and Joy Lynn. Congratulations, Parallel Church. We are so excited yeah. for you and so glad to bless you. Hey, you know what? My name is Brandon. This is my wife, Lindsay. We are the lead pastors at Oasis City Church in Duncan on Vancouver Island on the blessed coast, not just the West Coast, but the blessed coast. We're really excited today for Parallel Church. We've known uh, Pastor Kelly and Joy Lynn for years and watching their faithful leadership has been inspirational to many, many leaders. And I'm sure you're aware of how blessed you are as a church to have them uh, leading you into this new era. That's the word we had for you. This isn't just a new season, this is a new era. Yeah. And as you go forward in your community, coming alongside the people in your neighborhoods, the people in your communities, I believe that the message of hope that you carry is going to bring about transformation, 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 transform lives, transform neighborhoods, transform locations and cities and, and come on. So the, the sky's the limit. God is up to something great today. Congratulations, Parallel Church. We are so excited for you in this new era. Yes. Hey, we're so excited about the new, the name, the new name change and the new identity that you're coming into, Parallel Church. You know, that is a powerful concept. The more I think about it, it's so cool. Because Jesus walked parallel with his Father, and then he sent the Holy Spirit to walk parallel with us and through us. So by his presence in us, we can walk parallel to meet the needs of the people around us. I think that's so exciting. You get to go in all the world, in all your communities, in all your locations, and make a huge difference and that's because the Lord is powerful and he's faithful to help you take on this new challenge. So we're so delighted to hear what you're going to do. I encourage you because I think that as you do this, as you step into this, I believe that you're going to discover a whole new revelation of what the church really is all about. And you're going to be the church in a new dynamic. And that's what it's really all about is reaching and walking side by side with the people who have needs and being able to meet them by the grace of God in you. So we're so excited. Look forward to hearing the good reports. And we're so excited you're doing this. We're so in love with you and what you're doing. God bless you. And we hope to see you soon. Well, hello everyone. And a huge Texas welcome to you, Pastors Kelly and Joy Lynn and your church family. What an exciting day today is. And we celebrate with you and the future of your church. Church family, listen, when we met your pastors a few years ago, it's like those people you meet and you're like, where you been all my life? We just connected. And I'm so glad to be a part of what you guys are celebrating today and to honor your leaders. They are authentic. They are genuine. They are the real deal. And listen, a church's mission really doesn't ever change. We're here to lead people to Jesus. But our vision is often refreshed and updated and how we're going to do what God's called us to do. And I just encourage you, get behind your pastors. 
They are worth the effort and the time. They are leaders. They are godly people. They are lovable people. And they are leading this church into its future. And so we just celebrate with you today. My wife Janet and I send our love all the way from Texas. We're so thankful to be partnering with you and to be a part of your world just a little bit. And so Pastor Kelly and Joylynn, we love you, your family, church family. The future is yours and the best is yet to come. God bless you and we love you. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pastor Josh here in Detroit at Cross and Anchor Church. Hey, we love you guys so much. Congratulations on what's happening right now. I'm so excited for you guys' future. Um, here's what I've started to learn as we're a young church, only a few years old, is that God will stop at nothing to build his church. And it may look different from season to season, but he stays the same. And I'm just so excited because you guys have such great leadership, people who really love Jesus, people who really love your city and they love you. And so I just wanna encourage you this next season, push in, lean in like never before, watch God do miracles in your midst and realize that as great as the past has been, there's an even greater future ahead. I just really believe that for you guys. We're standing with you here from Detroit. We're praying for you. And I cannot wait, uh, hopefully, to get out there. I know things are crazy with the pandemic and whatnot, but God's going to continue to build his church. The gates of hell aren't going to prevail against it. The brightest days of the church are ahead of us. Believe that. They're not behind us. So, um, man, what a big reveal today. And I'm just cheering you guys on. We're standing with you. It's Larry Bry here from Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I got to meet your pastor, Pastor Kelly, a couple months ago. Uh, doing his podcast. And what a great man of God that he is. And he's the real deal. Um, but I also got to take a glimpse at your ministry and at your church. And I was inspired by what you're doing up there. But now when I heard you guys are changing the name, you're going to become Parallel Church. I loved it. I love the new season that God is ushering you into. You're going to see increase. You're going to see growth. You're going to see blessing like you've never seen before. Step into the into this season with confidence, knowing that God goes before you know that we're cheering you on here at elevation and we truly believe that your best days are yet to come wow wow <laughs> i don't know what to say that was a powerful night it was so good it's oh it's sad because it feels like it's over <laughs> but it's not we still have a party because we know what we're celebrating now. That's exactly, right. Exactly, exactly. So should we tell them what's out there? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. start. So out these doors, you're going to find our merch store. And um, I don't want to say anything, but <laughs> it's pretty Who good Who are you stuff. wearing? Who are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing Parallel Church. Oh, How about yourself? Yeah, How about I'm yourself? Parallel Church. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. So we have merch out there for you guys to go and check out. It's amazing stuff. But... Um, Maybe we run out, or maybe they didn't have your size, and then you don't get to take anything home with you, and that's not fair. Mm -hmm. Everyone should leave here wearing something that's parallel church. Exactly. And uh, so we actually, who here got a ticket when they came in? When you came in, registered, you got a little ticket. You know what that's for? That's because um, we got a little <laughs> parallel swag for y'all to take home with you. So this is for every single person that's here in attendance. When you bring your ticket to the tables, there's going to be out these doors is our little coffee shop usually. It is currently a free t-shirt place. And then out on our patio, we have another one. So if this one's getting all log jammed, you can head out that way too. Yeah. Um, and everyone gets to go home with one of these. But I feel like let's give a couple out right now. Let's try. Okay, but I, how about we see who's representing? We have six sites under our whole parallel church. So uh -huh. uh, let's hear who's here from uh, Tabor. Tabor. Okay, you go there. Hey, I'll, I'll throw, I'll okay. throw for you on that okay. one. Tabor, Tabor, Tabor. Tabor, one more time. Well, ah. that was, I didn't, I'm just. He's an athletic mayor, it's fine, he's athletic. <laughs> just sucking up. Here, I'm gonna put mine down. Okay. All right, who's okay. here from um, uh, Okotoks? Oh, oh, they're totally. Okay, right. no, I you guys, it. <laughs> you're the pastors, you, you don't get do free t-shirts. Whoever later, is later, not, later. who's later. not. Who is not the pastors, but would like a t-shirt. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Do not judge my athletic ability. <laughs> no, I'll throw it. It's okay. I am athletic. Ugh. Is that you? There we go. Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> so I'm actually right-handed. I totally messed. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Oh, and now, yeah. uh, I want to know: Is anyone here from Claire's home? Oh my gosh, Claire's home! You're the loudest, and I love it. Ready? It's gonna be. Nice, yeah! nice, nice. Okay. Hey. Amazing. Uh, how about our farthest away? Lloyd. Who Lloyd is here from Lloyd? Lloyd is representing. I love it. Ready? You're almost in the stroller. That's there, how there good I am. There was a small baby <laughs> very near there. It's fine. Okay, is there anyone here from Elbridge? I'm gonna do this because I feel like it totally counts. Nice. Hey! I got one more. This is for our awesome campus that we might have somebody here in person because because sometimes they like to come in person and watch online. Exactly. Let's hear it for our online campus. Oh. Right by the camera. Yes. <laughs> All right, there's one for each of you. Just make sure you head out either of these doors to that uh, station there or on the patio. What else we got there, Jill? We have got, oh, your kids. Don't forget your kids. They're yes, gonna be we do have tents. your children. They are still there. <laughs> They're not promise. camping overnight. We didn't get rid <laughs> please, of them. Please take They're them home. <laughs> You did the coffee bar. Ooh, and then there's going to be music still after. So yes. our band is going to play more of their original music. That's and right. And it's going to be released. Their album is going to be released, full album, released end of October. Exactly. You're going to want to get your hands on that. The opening song, Peace, right? How great was that? It's going to be on the so album. Good. All right. Okay, uh, Sarah, I have one more question. What? Do you have your phone on you what, now? What, this whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, so everybody can take out their phones now. You yes. can turn them back on. Yes. And you can start following our church Instagram, Parallel Church, hashtag. and use the hashtags, hashtag Parallel Church, mm -hmm. and hashtag For Love and Impact, mm -hmm. the and word, not the sign. And the F-O-R, not the number. True. That's true. Yeah. We just did it old school. <laughs> okay. So share everything you're seeing out there at the after party. Yes, spread the word. Also, guys, you don't have to listen to us anymore because we're done, because <laughs> we're going to party, and we're going to kick it off with this team. Exactly. Woo! You're the beginning and the end. Don't you guys dance, sing with us. Creator of it all, you were the God of your word. Woo! Your promises will stand, my future is in your hand. You'll never let me go. God of provider, we lift you high.
sticking around. Caught a couple more for you. When I'm in too deep, I call on you, Jesus. 
At your word, the winds will come. At your word, the winds will come. I have nothing to fear. Your glory goes before me. Glory goes before me. Glory goes before me. Glory goes before me.